devastating river area, the county police are closing roads leading to the Daedalus nuclear power station. Police Lieutenant Neil Johnson has told us that his department is responding to scattered fires inside the Palco compound at the plant. The origin of those fires is not yet known. However, Johnson told us that they are chemical and electrical in nature. He could not elaborate beyond that. CVCN has been trying to get in touch with Palco officials. We have from Washington Dr. Philip Dunmore of the Havensbrook National Laboratory. Dr. Dunmore is a nuclear physicist and is very familiar with the Daedalus plant. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Dunmore. Thank you. Dr. Dunmore, what can you tell from the information that is in about what is happening at the Daedalus plant? <clears throat> it's too early to tell. Uh, my guess is that it is uh, simply a fire. However, there is no way of telling at this point how serious it is. And what we are seeing is a typical response. Well, if it does get more serious, doctor, what would the next step be? Well, from all indications, everything is under control, but, uh, and that is a big but. If there were a problem at the plant, an evacuation may be called for. And what would that entail? An evacuation zone of a five-mile radius from the plant uh, would then be implemented. Well, well, will an evacuation be implemented, doctor? Well, I don't think so. Well, thank you, Dr. Dunmore. Do you mind staying with us uh, as this story unfolds? Not at all. That was Dr. Philip Dunmore of the Havensbrook National Laboratory. We would like to remind our stations down the line that we are extending our normal news broadcast to cover this late-breaking story. to uh, immediately switch to the county offices in Lower Springs. We have Brenda Kenyon out there, and we understand that the county executive, James Cameron, is about to talk to reporters. Brenda, are you there? Colin and Kendra, it appears we are about to get a statement. Could everyone please sit down? Could everyone please sit down so we can make an announcement? I'm Joan Jacobson with the County Executive Office. We have the following information concerning the Deadless Nuclear Power Plant. At 11.23 this morning, there was a minor disruption inside one of the main generators. Instead of, activating, instead of activating an automatic shutdown, this disruption continued and spread to other areas within the plant. This resulted, this resulted, this resulted in two separate fires, one of which causing, one of which causing a significant amount of damage to the core vicinity of the plant. The plant has gone into automatic shutdown. There is the possibility, the possibility of slight radioactive leakage to the surrounding areas. Now, as a result of this, with the cooperation with the NRC, a limited evacuation has begun. We have no other information at this time. It is complete chaos here. There has been an accident at the Daedalus nuclear power plant. There are two fires, one of which has caused significant damage to the main generator and spread to the core area. There is a limited evacuation. Colin and Kendra, you better take it back. This is all that I have at this time. Brenda Kenyon, CVCN News. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as you saw in that report from Brenda Kenyon, there has been an accident at the Daedalus nuclear power station. The reactor has apparently gone into automatic shutdown, and there has been some radioactive leakage. A limited evacuation has been ordered. This is a limited evacuation, meaning that only people within five miles of the plant are to be evacuated. We have a team of reporters on the scene, and we will be staying on the air until this crisis is over. Uh, we now have... We'll be going to... No, we won't. Okay. We'll try that in a little while. Meanwhile, live via satellite, we have Dr. Philip Dunmore, who is a nuclear physicist with the Havensbrook National Laboratory in Washington. Dr. Dunmore, thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. Doctor, what is the danger? Well, the reports are still sketchy, Colin. It seems there is a problem in the main generator. Uh, the nuclear core has been disturbed. Probably Excuse me, Doctor. Uh, doctor uh, we'll get right back to you, but uh, I understand that we have Brenda Kenyon again at the uh, Palco, at the county headquarters uh, where the Palco is about to make an announcement. Brenda, is, are, uh, Brenda, are you there? 
We have a report that the damage is more severe than originally reported. Unfortunately, that has not been confirmed. There is massive confusion, though. Um, we have been told that a Dr. William Harris, Vice President of Palco, will be addressing us shortly. A number of Nuclear Regulatory Commission officials have entered the building. Congressman Ask just drove up a while ago. Congressman Ask led the charge in trying to get Daedalus online. I haven't spotted Dr. Newberger yet. Dr. Newberger is the executive officer of PALCO. Uh, Mr. Harris, Dr. Harris is making his way down the hallway to the microphones. Uh, we shall be getting that statement momentarily. Ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, there has been an accident at the Daedalus power plant. At this time, we have begun a limited, I repeat, limited five-mile evacuation. Let me assure you there is no danger. At about 11.30 this morning, there was a mishap that caused an eccentric load on the main shaft of one of the main generators. What provisions have been made for the people? Now, simply speaking, this, this slowed the revolutions radically and caused a backload on the boiler. This sent, this sent temperatures higher than normal, and as a result, there was some core damage. Also, four small fires broke out inside the reactor building. Now, all four fires have been extinguished. Were there any casualties? Yes, I'm sorry to say there were three fatalities. Have their families been notified? There's two plant workers and a volunteer fireman. Who's handling the evacuation? Palco and local police. Is there any danger of a meltdown? Absolutely not. Is this another turtle? No. All the safety systems have been activated and fully engaged. The plant automatically shut itself down. Why is there an evacuation if there is no danger? This is procedure set forth by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. We're just meeting their requirements. We've had reports that have been very active. We have no indication of this at that time. If there was leakage, would you extend the evacuation? We're following the procedures set forth by the NRC. Answer my question, please, sir. I'm sorry. As we get more information, we'll pass it on to the press. Thank you very much. Dr. Harris, Dr. Harris, as you can see, we're facing a very serious situation. There has been an accident at the Daedalus nuclear power plant. We just spoke to Dr. William Harris, the vice president, and we are assured that uh, we will be kept informed. This is Brenda Canyon, CVCN News, reporting. All right, well, thank you, Brenda. That was a clearly upset Dr. William Harris, director of engineering for Palco at the county headquarters. Before we went to that live report, we were conducting an interview via satellite with Dr. Philip Dunmore, a physicist at the Havensbrook National Laboratory in Washington. And I'd like to thank Dr. Dunmore again for staying with us. Doctor, thank you. Um, now, Doctor, after hearing the Palco announcement, uh, can you shed any further light on what may be happening at the power plant? Well, as I mentioned earlier, there seems to be a malfunction in the main generator. A localized fire must have occurred there. Apparently, it was quickly extinguished. Dr. Uh, Lieutenant Johnson, who was on earlier, uh, spoke about a second and possibly a third fire. At the well, point. again, I'm, I'm only speculating, but my guess is they took place in the core area. Mm -hmm. When there are sequential fires, as the lieutenant suggested, they often occur simultaneously in the core area. Dr. Dunmore, what sign do we have that a shutdown has occurred? Well, I'm not that familiar with the Daedalus shutdown procedure, but I'm sure that the plant is shut down safely. If it hadn't, we we would know. We've just been given the names of two of the three men who died earlier today at the Deadliest Nuclear Power Plant. They are James O'Neill, 47, of Babylon Clay Island, who we are told was a quality assurance engineer, and Thomas Langhorn, 28, a maintenance worker. Both men were in the reactor building at the time of the accident. A third man, a volunteer fireman, has not yet been identified, although we are told that he died of a heart attack. And I understand now that we have John Tilford live somewhere near the power plant. Uh, John, exactly where are you? 
News of the evacuation has spread like wildfire. The, uh, the mood at this intersection, I'm at uh, Route 29 and County Road 39 in Calverton, is much like that of an intersection in Manhattan during rush hour. Uh, while, although there is a very visible police contingent down the way, uh, nobody seems to be paying any attention to traffic signals and there's a very great lack of control here. Uh, in the past few minutes, we've seen cars careening over shoulders at very high speeds, and uh, people just seem to be... No what? Oh, something's going on up here. It looks like some kind of a conflict. I think one car has hit another, and of course... Oh, excuse me. It's a fight. What's going on here? Sir. This TV. Is everybody all right? Everything's fine. My yeah. truck's not all right. You okay? Check out my okay. truck, man. Pay for the truck, huh? Hey, I'll see you later, pal. Well, because nobody's moving anywhere, everybody is very upset at this point, as you can see. Uh, way up the road, I'd say a mile, two or three miles at least that I can see, there's nothing happening at all as far as John, fuses movement. are pretty short out there. What? I said that the evacuation is having problems. Uh, yes, Colin, that's that's correct. I've been mainly at this intersection. I've been up and down the road here just a little bit, but I haven't ventured too far from this particular intersection. Uh, we we do have some other problem areas up the island. The North County Road, or excuse me, North Country Road, is totally gridlocked at this point. The Jericho Turnpike up the island is at a complete standstill, and the Clay Island Expressway. Uh, is not moving much at all, uh, if at all. It, it, it is the primary means of egress for most of the island uh, residents within this five mile radius of the Daedalus plant. Uh, I, I think we better leave this traffic alone at this point. Updating the situation, a limited five mile evacuation, five mile radius evacuation has been called for the, by the county because of an accident at the Daedalus nuclear power plant. If you do live within five miles of the deadless plant. We are advising you now to leave the area as quickly but safely as possible. And we understand that it is possible to leave uh, the area of the power plant by the east side of the plant. According to the reports that we have, uh, almost no one is doing this and that's a fairly easy route. Now this. To quickly recap for those just joining us, there has been an accident at the Daedalus nuclear power station. We do not know at this time the severity of the accident Two workers and a volunteer fireman have died. They were in the reactor area. A limited evacuation has been called for. Police and firemen have responded to the plant and surrounding area. Traffic in the area has come to a standstill. There's much confusion at this time. CVCN News mobile units have been covering the story as it happens. There apparently has been one shooting fatality and another shooting just witnessed on CVCN. We will continue to keep you informed. Colin? Thank you, Kendra. We understand that a team of SEMA specialists have just arrived at the plant. SEMA is the State Emergency Management Agency, and that agency exists to oversee and manage responses to emergency and evacuation procedures at nuclear power plants. We are told that SEMA is made up of private sector scientists, engineers, and other experts who are totally familiar with nuclear power plants. Although SEMA's members are private consultants to the energy industry, they have the full backing and power of the state when responding to an emergency such as this. understand now that apparently there has been an altercation at the Palco headquarters and uh, Dr. William Harris has just struck a reporter. We'll be switching back over there as quickly as possible, but uh, do you have something for us, Kendra? Yes, Colin, we will be switching out to Tom Walsh, who is in the plant area, but right now there's a little confusion out there. It is in a neighborhood that is still trying to evacuate. 
While we have a delay, uh, there is something, there's two things that struck me in the interview with Dr. Schulman and Rita. One being that the cause is still unknown of these fires, and two, that it is still, quote, a possibility of a shutdown? Well, that's the thing. We don't know. Uh, we, we don't have that information yet. We are told that a shutdown procedure is in effect right now, that an, a limited evacuation is in effect, but we just don't have any confirmation that the shutdown has completely taken place. But as confusing as this can be... Well, just a moment, Kendra, but uh, uh, I do understand we do have Tom Walsh now, so we'll be switching over to him. Tom? This is Kelly McGrath. I found her playing outside just a few minutes ago. She had been in her room playing while her babysitter was watching television. What happened, sweetheart? Alan left me. I can only speculate, but I imagine her babysitter heard about the evacuation and left her behind. Do you know where your parents are? Is Marilyn again in trouble? No, of course not, sweetheart. Marilyn is her babysitter. Do you know where your parents are? No, I think that we're due. Don't worry about it. We'll find them. Colin and Kendra, we've been all over this neighborhood and we can't find anyone. Kelly's the only person who's shown up so far, and we're going to get her back to the studio right now. Back to you. Thank you, Tom. And I hope we'll see both of you back here real soon. Colin? Thank you, Kendra. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to apologize and explain uh, that we have been experiencing some minor technical difficulties. Well, quite frankly, we've been caught completely off guard with this extended coverage of the incident at the Deadless Nuclear Power Plant. We've also just learned that the family of our director, Paul Castorini, has been involved in a serious automobile accident, and uh, Paul is uh, on his way to the hospital right now. We hope everything is okay with Lisa and the children. And now, now we're going back to Brenda Kenyon, who's at the Palco headquarters where there's been an altercation. Brenda? Colin, Kendra, Dr. William Harris has just lost his poise. After the formal statement, there was quite a bit of confusion. Uh, many reporters trying to get more information. Um, Dr. Harris just did not anticipate the intensity of the questioning. Um, if, if you look at the videotape, you can see what happened. That reporter was Eric Simmons from Cable News Network. I can only guess uh, what precipitated Dr. Harris's assault. Quite honestly, there is a mass of confusion here. This is Brenda Kenyon, CBCN News. And now this. We'll be going to Port Calverton where Renee Burke is standing by. When we come back, Dr. Philip Dunmore will return and perhaps we can get an update on what is happening at the Daedalus Nuclear Power Station. Now here's Renee Burke. Renee? This is the Port Calverton to Port Jude ferry terminal. Since about mid-afternoon, this place has been packed with people trying to leave Clay Island. So far, officials say they've already made four extra trips across the Clay Island Sound. They say the ferries will continue to run throughout the night. However, after this next trip, they will not be transporting any more cars on the ferry, just people. As a result, automobiles have been abandoned in line. There is no more vehicle access to these ramps. Uh, the tow trucks that were here a half hour ago, they've all left. Apparently there's been some price gouging among uh, charter boat captains. Some of these captains are charging people $200 a person for the one hour trip across the sound to Port Jude. A ferry worker told me he could guarantee me a space uh, on the ferry for about $25. All in all, it's not a pretty sight here. I'm Renee Burke for CVCN Eyewitness News at the Port Calverton Ferry Terminal. Okay, thank you, Renee. Uh, I'm back again now with Dr. Philip Dunmore of the Havensbrook National Laboratory. Thank you for staying with us, Dr. Dunmore. Mm -hmm. Dr. Dunmore, can you shed any further light on what's happening at the plant? Actually, I have nothing new. Uh, your station has all the information that is available at this time. 
Well, Doctor, you just uh, spent 20 minutes, I know, on the phone with uh, top officials of both the NRC and PALCO. Certainly, you must have something that you can tell us. Colin, I don't want to sound evasive, but there is nothing new at this time. There is... Well, there is what, Doctor? Well, there is nothing new that can be discussed here. Well, what are you referring to? National security. That's what I'm referring to. Excuse me, Doctor, but I still don't quite understand what you're getting at. Quite frankly, sabotage. That's a pretty serious charge, Doctor. No, I am not saying that the plant has become victim of sabotage. Uh, I am simply saying that uh, there is a, con is a consideration at times like these, and it is a possibility that will be looked into once this crisis has passed. Dr. Dunmore, you do have friends at the Daedalus plant, don't you? Yes, I do. And Good friends. And aren't you concerned for their safety? Well, they have told me that there has been a small explosion, excuse me, a small fire in the reactor building. Uh, that caused two other fires. They tell me that four people were killed inside the reactor building. But now all is under control and uh, there is no cause for alarm. Excuse me, doctor, but uh, we were told that only two people were killed inside the reactor and one person outside. I didn't realize that. I thought you had reported four. Well, doc. Uh, just a moment. Uh, doctor, ex uh, excuse me, we have been told now that the SEMA team has arrived at the gate of the plant, so we're going to be going to John Tilford right now. If you'll hang in with us, please. That's right, Colin. It's been a very hectic day out here, and the weather is not helping us out at all. It's, re it's really starting to come down. Uh, however, right now I'm with Jamie Weber of the SEMA team. Mr. Weber, what is the holdup? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, why did SEMA send you here? Uh, how many people are in your group? Well, there's four of us in our group. Uh, there's myself, uh, Jim Handy, uh, he's a nuclear startup engineer, Lou Morocco, a physicist and jack of all trades, and Celia Majikowski. Uh, she's an expert in emergency evacuation. Uh, she's got quite a job ahead of her today. Uh, SEMA is here to monitor and help the utility put the plant back into a safe position. Uh, tell me, Mr. Weber, why aren't you going directly into the plant? What's the delay? Well, the guards asked us to wait here. Uh, I'm sure it'll be just a short wait. John, can you ask Mr. Weber what he's been told about the accident? Uh, Mr. Weber, what, uh, what information do you have as to what the problem is with the plant? We, we've been en route most of the afternoon. Uh, you probably have more information than we do. Well, is there the possibility of sabotage? Step over here. Excuse me. Uh, hey, excuse me. Uh, I'm sorry, this is a public access. I understand that. I understand that. Please, right now, we have a situation. I'm sorry, Colin. Uh, Please. This, uh, the public has a right to know what is going on. Please turn off the camera. Well, uh, could, we just want to find out why Mr. Weber is not being allowed please, inside the plant. Off, please, excuse me, excuse me. Can you please... Do you have any comment about, about sa the possibility of sabotage? Know, John, okay. So, Colin, I'm sorry. Uh, we're not getting uh, anything at this point. The, uh, the guards don't want us anywhere near the, even the main gate, and Mr. Weber has, uh, has not been given clearance, uh, I suppose, to get inside. Although I, I really don't know what is going on because they're not giving us any information. The guards are not saying anything. Uh, when we get more information, we'll be back. Uh, we'll, we'll cut in back to you. Uh, uh, for now, this is John Tilford, CVC in News 9. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back again, and we have with us again Dr. Philip Dunmore of the Havensbrook National Laboratory in Washington, D.C., via satellite. Doctor, thank you for staying with us. Doctor, uh, forgive me for pursuing this particular line of questioning, but um, it would be convenient if a major accident could be attributed to sabotage rather than to technical or human error. Isn't that correct? No, I'm not quite sure where you're heading. Well, Doctor, it, if there was a, a meltdown or a serious leakage of radioactivity, this, of course, would jeopardize the entire nuclear industry. Isn't that correct? That's self-evident. You know it would. Well, then, do you expect sabotage to be the excuse to come out tomorrow morning? I resent that implication. Well, forgive me, doctor, but uh, let me ask a question point blank. Wouldn't it benefit the nuclear industry, Havensbrook, Palco, and the NRC, if a serious accident could be put at the doorstep of a saboteur instead of the shortcomings of the technology. Excuse me. Well, no more questions. Doctor, Can you doctor I think that's a valid question. Please. Dr. Dunmore? I'm sorry, no more questions. Doctor, please stay with us, all right? Hello, doctor? Can somebody please help me with this microphone? Can he hear me? I guess he, okay, he's disconnected himself. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was Dr. Philip Dunmore of the Havensbrook National Laboratory. and. Uh, 
Kendra, I believe Kendra has something for us now. Kendra? Colin, we have just gotten word that director Paul Cossarini's wife and children are okay. Earlier they had been in an automobile accident while in the evacuation, but they are fine. And if you're watching, Paul, our best wishes to Lisa and the kids. Colin. Thank you, Kendra. That's, that's very good news. Um, as you may or may not know, Paul Castorini is our director, and uh, we've been working without him for quite some time here during the course of this event. Uh, all I can ask is that you bear with us. We are presenting the news as quickly as it becomes available to us, and it's coming at us at a rather intense uh, pace. It's a little frantic around here right now. Um, you may have to deal with some minor glitches and technical difficulties, and uh, all I can say is that we're doing the best that we can uh, under the circumstances. And uh, I understand right now that we have um, Renee Burke at the Port Calverton Ferry Terminal with a report. Uh, Renee? About a half hour ago, a small boat capsized just outside of the ferry terminal here. The boat was carrying over 50 passengers, and it made it out about 150 yards before it began to take water. Uh, the boat is called the Lady of the Mist, and it was captained by a Mr. Donald Rumfield. Rumfield apparently tried to make it back to shore, but the boat ended up sinking where it was, just offshore. Fortunately, it was during low tide, so the boat sank in only five feet of water. However, there was one casualty. Apparently, one of the passengers suffered a heart attack. With me right now is Lori Fitzgerald from Brooklyn, New York. She was on the boat when it went down, and as you can see, she's still a little shaken up. Lori, tell us what happened. Well, we were all jammed onto the boat, and it was like being in a subway car at rush hour, it, only it was worse. And, I was, and at first it was fun, but then we felt water at our feet. Everybody panicked, and the boat went straight down. A after the initial panic, everybody, though, pulled together and helped each other out, and we felt the boat go down and hit bottom. What are you going to do now? I'm going to get off this damned island as fast as I can. At the Port Calverton Ferry Terminal, I'm Renee Burke. Thank you, Renee, to bring us up to date, this recap. At 11.23 this morning, there was a flash fire at the Daedalus Nuclear Power Station. As a result of the fire, two other fires occurred in the vicinity of the core of the reactor building. It is not clear at this time whether or not the plant has gone into automatic shutdown. Both the utility, Palco, and the county have called for evacuation of the surrounding area. Reports indicate that people attempting to evacuate are not having much success. Back at the plant, however, engineers and technicians have arrived and are waiting to get inside to help in this shutdown process. We do not know if the NRC officials are, are at hand at the plant. In fact, we have not had one report from the NRC all day. What we do know is three men were killed in that fire this morning at the plant, and we think there may have been a fourth. Right now, we will be switching to Tom Walsh, who was on his way back to the studio. Kendra, I'm near exit 57 of the expressway. Uh, traffic is at a standstill. A few minutes ago, I had interviewed some commuters trying to make their way to various destinations from the evacuation. What are your feelings about this traffic tie-up in the evacuation? I'm terrified. Where are you going, sir? What are you kidding? I'm not going anywhere. Let me rephrase the question. Where would you like to be going? Anywhere off Clay Island. I'm going to find a good attorney and sue the hell out of Palco. I take it uh, that you're annoyed? Yeah, I'm pissed. I'm livid. We're back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I understand now that John Tilford is in the control room of the Daedalus Nuclear Power Colin, Station. Before we go to John, I just feel that we do have an obligation to tell our viewers what exactly has been happening here at the station. Yes, you're right, Kendra. Uh, what Kendra means is that this station has been asked not to air the events taking place inside the power plant. And after weighing the consequences, the station management has made a decision that our moral and ethical obligation supersedes all other considerations. We will therefore now turn this broadcast over to John Tilford, live from the Daedalus Nuclear Power Plant. John, are you there? Uh, Co Colin, I'm in the control room of the Daedalus plant right now. Uh, I was surprised to find much less activity than I had, uh, had anticipated. There's, there seems to be a sense of mild resolve uh, here. I haven't spoken to any of the workers yet, but from what I can see, nothing seems to be out of, uh, out of order. Yes, we, uh, we were challenged once on our way up here. 
uh, two men, one from the utility itself and one from the NRC, asked us to wait while they contacted somebody from the administration building. And then Jamie Weber got on the phone, and after some very strong language by Jamie, uh, we were given clearance to come here into the control room. Uh, Jamie feels, however, that the problem is not in here, not in the control room, but down in the reactor itself. Uh, the SEMA team, uh, which is working with Jamie, is now making notes. I don't know if you, Colin, I don't know if you heard that or saw what just happened, but we just had a tremor. That was the third tremor we've had since we've been in here. Uh, it, it feels kind of like we're having minor uh, earthquakes here. Uh, Evidently, what's happening, uh, from what I've learned, they're dumping water. They're dumping contaminated water from the reactor vessel itself. And in doing so, that causes a, a vacuum. And relieving the pressure of the vacuum is ca causing the movements. Uh, and right, right now, uh, oh, there, that was a big one. Jesus Christ. <laughs> that was a real big one there. I, I, I don't mind telling you, it doesn't give me the greatest confidence in the world. Uh, but anyway, Jamie is trying to figure out what exactly the problem is. Uh, I, uh, we're waiting until he gets back uh, so we can talk to him and, and, and find out some more information. Uh, excuse me, sir, uh, my name is John Tilford of CBC. Right and what is your name, sir? Damn it, John, I've asked you to hold off in the interviews. I told you I wouldn't keep you in the dark, didn't I? Now, this is a very, very touchy situation. You're only going to aggravate it. Uh, excuse me, Jamie, Colin Giles back in the studio wants to know if you can give us any information. At this point, there is nothing new. I mean, it's just too early to judge. I have Jim, Cecilia, and, and Lou checking out the basic safety systems, and everything looks all right. But I got to be honest with you, the tremors aren't any good. Now, uh, listen, you got to excuse me, please. Uh, Colin, we'll uh, come back to you if we have something more. John, uh, for as long as possible, we will be staying with you live through the remainder of this uh, broadcast. If you will now, please update us on what's happening. Uh, Colin, I, I think we have a breakthrough uh, now. Uh, right now, I'm in the reactor building itself, uh, just outside the containment area. Let me, let me tell you what happened just a few minutes ago up in the control room. Um, Celia Majowski and Lou Morocco of the SEMA team uh, noticed a discrepancy on one of the control panels. And uh, uh, Jim Handy, the SEMA startup engineer, checked that out himself and uh, found that one of the coolant valves uh, was left in the, uh, in the closed position. And, and that, in fact, was supposed to be evidently in the open position during the shutdown procedures. Uh, Jamie Weber indicated to me that in a conversation he had with a Palco employee that uh, the employee said it had been in that position since the shutdown began, but Jamie stated that that was the wrong position and that that was one of several coolant valves that should have been left in the open position when they go into uh, when they go into shutdown procedures. Uh, so he spent a few minutes up in the control room arguing the point and then decided to come down here. John, where is Jamie now? Right now, Jamie is circling around the uh, the outer wall of the containment vessel itself, looking for other potential problems. Can you go inside? I, I don't know. Can you ask what the radiation levels are? Well, as a matter of fact, uh, Colin, that was one of the first questions I had when we when we came into the plant. Uh, I did speak to a Palco radiologist who indicated to me that the radio radioactivity levels throughout the plant are uh, are perfectly normal. As a matter of fact, my uh, radiation badge indicates no unusually high levels of uh, of radioactivity, and I, I think Jamie is coming down. Jamie. Excuse me, uh, did you see what you wanted to see? Yes, I did, John. Uh, valve 17RC15E is, uh, is closed. Now, that's a secondary coolant valve, and it has to be open. Well, what are the consequences if it's not open? Well, if that valve isn't open and uh, about 20 more like it, it's, it's going to have a runaway meltdown situation. Can you open them? Not from down here. It's, uh, some of the valves are in the containment area. Well, can we go inside the containment area and open them manually? No, it's an extremely hot area. We're just going to have to try to open it from the control room. That's, listen, I have to get back, John, OK? Fine. Did you check that list? Uh, Colin, I believe they're going back up to the control room. Uh, as of right now, I'm going to stick with Jamie. Do me one other favor, if you would. What's that, Colin? Uh, when you get set up in the control room, I'd like you to keep the tape rolling. And, right. Uh, good luck. 
Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, I feel obliged to inform you that this station has been asked to not air what is transpiring inside the Daedalus nuclear power plant. After many discussions during station breaks, it is the feeling of the station management that we have a moral and ethical obligation to report this story as it presents itself. We will continue to do so. Uh, George Heaney, the plant manager, has tried to get us kicked out because, frankly, they just don't want a, a crew in here, and they don't want pictures being taken, evidently. Uh, Jamie Weber has, uh, has so far allowed us to stay. Uh... But, yeah, George Heaney, one of the men that was earlier talking to Jamie, uh, is the plant manager. Uh, he... Uh, he is uh, taking a by-the-book approach. Uh, Jamie really wants to get right to the problem and just disregard the, 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 the procedures as they're written. Uh, but George Heaney wants, uh, wants us to, to believe that everything is okay and that the tremors we've been feeling are consistent with the shutdown. He maintains that the plant has gone into shutdown. Jamie has been arguing with him uh, about that, that point. Excuse me. Jamie, those valves are supposed to be closed during your shutdown procedure. This isn't a shutdown, George. The head, this plant is heading for the run runaway meltdown. I mean, can't you feel those tremors? What the hell do you think they mean? This is my plant. I was running up before you were in diapers. Now let me do my job, kid. I don't, I don't think you understand the situation here. I really don't. Uh, excuse me. Uh, Excuse me, Celia, this is Celia Majowski, yes. one of the SEMA team. What, is it, what does it mean? What, can you tell us uh, what, the, what is happening? Yes, John. Uh, the Dallas is a light water uh, reactor. Back up it but produces... It, it, extremely, sorry. It, it produces extremely high... It produces extremely high temperatures. Uh-huh. Um, it's, it's controlled and cooled down by water continuously flowing around the reactor. I see. Okay. At this moment, the, the water has been turned off. So what exactly does that mean? John, that actually means that with the amount of high temperatures, we could actually have uh, flash fires and local explosions. You mean in the plant, we could have that right now? Yes, John. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Well, uh, basically what she said uh, is that uh, the temperatures could get so hot uh, that we could have a runaway meltdown if things, are not, if things are not taken care of. I do have the feeling, though, that Jamie Weber does understand what the problem is and they, that he knows what to do to solve the problem. Uh, but, but they're working out right now uh, which valves uh, need to be shut down, which coolant valves, or rather which ones need to be opened. Uh, but they can't go into the containment to do that. They've got to do that from the control panel here, I if I'm making any sense at all. This is a really uh, delicate situation, a real, real critical time here. All right, I must insist you turn that camera off. But, uh, uh, Mr. Heaney, I realize this is uh, out of the ordinary, but the public at large could be in danger, so we want to inform them. I about insist now! There will be no television. Now, you people can stay in the control room here, but there will be no television. Now, listen, goddamn it. I don't give a damn whether the camera's on or the camera's off. We have work to do, George. Now, let's get to it, all right? Well, what the hell did you do that for? There will be no television here. Mr. Howard, I, am, I insist that that camera stays on. We have a right to be you here. You and your people can stay here. But I want to tell you something. You better keep out of our way. Yeah. I insist that the camera remain on. I said no, God damn it. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, we don't even have audio right now. Obviously, something is happening there. Uh, this is not our technical difficulty, but uh, the plant has not wanted us in there. Colin is off the set right now, fighting for our right to broadcast the events. We have audio. John, are you there? Basically, stay out of his way because uh, the situation is getting uh, possibly dangerous here. I, I don't feel real comfortable here myself. Frankly, I'd, I'd like to get out of the way. Hello. This is what happened. As the power and the temperature rose, our lead man gave the command to the operator to trip in the fast control box. Well, that's just it, George. That's, uh, that's wrong. Down. You shouldn't have done that. God damn it, that's bullshit, Jamie. 
He was going by the book. He was going by the book. The book is wrong, George. The fucking book is wrong. Now you know better than that, Jamie. The book was right. You know I was right. No, it's not, George. I'm sorry. It's not right. Uh, we can't see you, John. We can't see anything that's going on. Can you tell us what's happening there? As far as I know, Jamie is taking care of the problem. But as you can tell, and as you, I'm, I'm sure, heard, and I apologize for the language, uh, it's a difficult situation. It's a very difficult situation. And we're just hoping that, uh, that everything goes OK. A as, uh, as you can tell, it's so dangerous that there is a possibility of a, of a meltdown or something to that effect. I'm not tec technically adept, so I don't know exactly what, what is happening. but. Uh, honest to God, I, I hope they do work it out okay. I hope that they figure out what the problem is. Oh, now that was, <laughs> we just had a major uh, tremor there. God damn, that was a big one. <laughs> I have to admit, I'm, I'm scared to die. I'm shaking like a leaf. Uh, look at me. Can, can you tell me what's going on now? What, what have you? Jamie, Jamie will put. Well, yeah. what, what is happening? Have you solved anything? No, we haven't. At this point, everything is basically the same. We're uh, uh, we're looking into possibly the, the, again with the coolant valves yeah. and the containment area. We're going to try to open them for the control room, but uh, I really uh, I'm lost right at this point. We're trying to we're trying to find what the reason what the reasoning is why it's the coolant valves are stuck closed. So the valves are stuck. They're stuck. Just give us a chance, will you please? Doc? We will. I, I think we should get out of the way. I don't think it's a good idea to, to bother anybody at this point because we're in such a critical situation. What's happening, yeah, for God's sake? It. Well, we're obviously Try off. To do the best you can, guys. I think, I think Jamie Weber has definitely been successful. All right. Look at Jamie. Yes. yes. So we, so everything's okay. We, yeah, we took care of God. Everything. Thank God. Uh, I think we can safely say we're end of a very long, long day. Oh, thank God for that. Really. That's great. Well, I tell you, I feel relieved myself, and I'm sure you do too. And I, I, you did a splendid job, and I learned a lot myself. Thanks. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Well, oh boy, it's a good feeling. Let me tell you, it's a good feeling knowing that this is uh, this has come to an end. It's been a rough day here, and uh, there's been a lot of tension and a lot of tempers uh, flying. But uh, as far as we know, that's it. And uh, so, unless we have anything else to give you, we'll we'll uh, hand it back to you at the studio, Colin and Kendra. Now, okay. This is John Tilford signing off. The crisis is over. The Daedalus nuclear power station, which had an accident this morning, has gone into a successful shutdown. It will take hours, perhaps even days, to determine all of the damage. And we still do not know the severity of the accident. But the immediate danger is behind us. Well, it does appear to be. And as you probably already know, we have extended our normal news coverage to cover this accident at the Daedalus nuclear power plant. It all started this morning when a fire caused a disruption in the core vicinity of the reactor building. An evacuation was called for, causing problems all over Clay Island. And just a few minutes ago, we watched some very dramatic video of SEMA officials shutting down the utility. SEMA now assures us that there is no longer any danger. Yes, but there are still many unanswered questions that have to be answered. All of us have a right to know whose fault this is. And what are the probabilities of this happening again? It leaves one to wonder. Later tonight and tomorrow, we will interview the people who should give us some of those answers. This story is far from over. Well, I will be uh, willing to bet one thing. I'm going to wager my entire 15-year career in broadcast journalism that this was not an act of sabotage.
<laughs> I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Kelly. <gasps> and that right over there is another story that we'll be covering. Um, before we go, I would like to acknowledge the heroic job done by John Tilford and his news team, Ross N uh, Hellman, who was on camera, and Pat Nagy on audio, and all the technical people and reporters who stayed with us through this whole story in spite of the danger. And I would also like to add my admiration for the very professional manner in which you handled yourself, Kendra. I think you did a, a marvelous job through a very unique and uh, fast-changing story here. It was very difficult and long. Well, Colin, thank you. And, and I appreciate your support within it, too. We went through this together, as we all did. As we all did. Ladies and gentlemen, we now rejoin our normal broadcast schedule. Good night.